You know, Bishop tell us in this house that the best of God, for as long as X is still concerned, is semen. He has not changed his plan. I want you to pray again that the Lord will make you mighty, that you find the relevance in his agenda. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that concerning the Lord's agenda on earth, that you will be mighty. In the name of the Lord Jesus, listen, the Bible says that in the great house there are vessels, vessels according to their use, vessels according to their purposes. Can you pray tonight that the Lord indeed will make you a great vessel? The Lord indeed will make you a man full of relevance. In the name of the Lord Jesus, for in Jesus' name I will pray you. And finally tonight, the book of Acts chapter 11 verse 24. Acts 11, 24. I want us to pray for a man of God. The Bible says, For he was a good man, good in himself, and also at once for good, and the advantage of other people, full of and controlled by the Holy Ghost, full of faith, of his belief that Jesus is the Messiah, and a large country. Let's read KJV. Sorry, I'm in the Bible says that for he was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people were added to the Lord. Can we pray tonight that the Lord will stretch his out for at, at what arm to our man of God? That he will be full of his spirit. That the Lord, that the Lord will make him full of his spirit. That there will be a new dimension upon new dimension, new relevance upon new relevance, new opening upon new openings. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that the Lord will open the scripture affairs. To him, that the Lord will send the spirit unto him again. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and what pray that the Lord will comfort him, the Lord will strengthen him, the spirit of the Lord will forever be with him. For in Jesus' name, I will pray. Can you pray for yourself that as you listen, they are about to listen to the word tonight, that the Lord will send his word to you. That you will not go on the same way you've come tonight. That wisdom be added to you. That strength be added to you. That might be added to you. That the Lord will open your heart your heart to receive that which he has in stock for you. That testimony we are banned from today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' most precious name I will pray. Amen. If your hands are not too busy tonight, can you please join your hands as we welcome our speaker for tonight with our banquet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's have us in God's presence this evening. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sorry for the delay. I guess you're about to know what I'm about to say is the reason for my delay. If you don't know, it's Monica. So uh, <laughs> we have to just take her like that. <laughs> well, thank God for this evening. All right, let's just sing a short word of prayer this evening. Um, our dear and Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for another time in your presence. Thank you for gathering us here once again. We pray, Father, Lord, as I speak this evening, I would not speak of my own, but Spirit of the Lord, you speak through me in Jesus' name. Amen. And the people of God will be edified, and your name will be glorified in Jesus' Amen. name. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise, Praise Jesus. Um, first off, I would like to say a big thank you to our man of God. Hallelujah. I do not take it for granted. It's a great privilege, you know, to entrust people to speak to souls, to lives. So I do not take it for granted. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Um, to go straight into it, this evening I will be speaking on a topic I titled "Who or What Refreshes You." Mm. Who or what refreshes you? Um. So when um, I was I got it from the theme of this month, which says it's a month of roundabout refreshing. And I was thinking about the word refreshing. And so I went to the dictionary. I mean I already know what refreshing means, but I just wanted to be sure of what that word meant to be refreshed. I know it gave a lot of meanings to the word refresh, like restore, energize, ref, um, refreshing, re rejuvenate, and so many other words like that. 
And so um, I was thinking of what what could make us enter around about refreshing? What could make us feel energized and not feel weary at this work, in this work of life, this balancing the work you do, your career, and balancing the work of God you do, and every other thing, family, you know, even the, 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 the country you are staying. And um, the only thing I could pinpoint, which also um, Minister Bayo spoke one time about during this month, was that it was the Holy Spirit. And so I said, it's the Holy Spirit that is our refresher. That's the only person that I could think of to say, is the one that refreshes that can refresh in us and so when i hallelujah praise jesus and so when you think about refreshing you immediately think about you taking like you are in a traffic and it's almost like standstill and you are looking for just one cold bottle of water to take i mean it's and when you take that water you just you even though you are still stuck in that traffic you just feel, you know, better just taking that water. Or you are coming home from a very, hot, like it was whole hot, or going to office and you enter a room and, you know, the AC is just, your body just feels calm. And that's what the Holy Spirit is here oh, yeah. to do for us. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise, Praise Jesus. And so that's what I think of when I hear about refreshing. Mm -hmm. Taking a cool bath, you know, just re-energizing those muscles that are, have gone loose. And that's what I mean by um that's what i know by what when you say you are refreshed and so i was like and lightening it to like when i was thinking about basically the thing that refreshes me is like water like just water 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 is what came kept coming into my head and um why why if you look at our body i'm not a medical doctor but i believe they said your body is made up of about 60 percent of water and so you take, your body is made of, of water, your blood is made up of water, but you still need this water daily, this daily intake of water. And so it's just the same way as we are spirit being living in the body. If we are not taking the spirit, if we are not, we are not in, engaging the Holy Spirit, then we are not living as we ought to. Because if you are, if you are saying that we are, our body is made up of water, and you don't take water for one or two days, you, can, you know it will tell on you that you have not taken this water. I, I mean, I don't know if someone can go about more than a day or two not taking a single drop of I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but I know the person, it will tell on the person. And it's the same way with the Spirit, um, the Holy Spirit. If we are not engaging the Holy Spirit, if we are not asking Him for counsel, it will tell on us. It is the whole, um, it's the Holy Spirit that can help us, that can refresh in us when we feel weak, tired from, you know, Different things and things will come up in life. There are things will always come up, but it is the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is the only one, only the sure guarantee. Because Bishop, when I was listening to Bishop's message, he said we should always not look at the Holy Spirit like another or like like a lesser person, um, God, because it is the same with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. His fun their functions are just different. And so Bishop said in that message that when while God the Father, God the Son, they are here up there in heaven. It was the Holy Spirit that was sent on earth to help us. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. And so is Bishop said in that message that he, the Holy Spirit is the most important personality. And most sometimes, most times, when we receive Jesus, we have not received the Holy Spirit. We we, we yes, it's good we've taken Jesus as our Lord and Savior, but we still need the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit that can tell us the mind of Christ, that can help us tell us the mind of God and what we need daily to live. Hallelujah. Praise yeah. Jesus. And so um, when I said who or what refreshes you, because sometimes we go through, we go to look for things in other places to refresh us. You know, when you are tired, you maybe want to watch a nice movie or you want to just go out and party or just feel energized again and while that's good i mean that is life we should, say we should enjoy life so that is life you could do that but that only lasts temporarily it doesn't last for you i mean you can't party all every day all day you can't watch a movie all day and so that's why i said we really need daily who we need is the holy spirit praise jesus hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. and so i listed out um let me just read first First John four four. If you could. 
1 John 4, chapter verse 4. Okay. It says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we know that the he that is in us is the Spirit of God. Praise Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's that Holy Spirit that is in you that will help you overcome this world that Hallelujah. you live in daily. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, if we go also to Romans 8, Romans 8, 9. Romans chapter 8. It's nine. Okay. It says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Not now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The next verse. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Verse 11. It says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that are dwelling in you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so this is why I said the Holy Spirit is because here it says it will quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit so if you don't have that spirit in you what is there to refresh you what is there to quicken your body that body that can easily get tired that can easily get weary after just a day's work it is the holy spirit in us that quickens our body that helps us you know get geared up to do that which god has sent us to do praise jesus Hallelujah. and so um like uh, i said what the refreshing of the holy spirit does for us and first uh i said it helps us fulfill purpose amen, amen. let's look at luke 3 verse 21 to 23 luke chapter 3 21 to 23 it says now when all the people were baptized it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying. The heaven was opened, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape, like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. Next verse. And Jesus himself began to be himself began to be about thirty years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Eli. Um, if we look down also, it says that, that this is when Jesus started his public ministry. Mm. That was after the Holy Spirit descended upon him. Maybe he might, he might have started something, but he didn't start public ministry. I think it was about 25 or 26. It says it, it was after this, when the Holy Spirit decide, descended upon Jesus, that is when he started public ministry. And so that's why I said he helps us fulfill, fulfill, fulfill purpose. Because if Jesus had to wait, for the Holy Spirit to descend upon him, to feel, to start public ministry, that was his purpose to you know to come here and also to die. I don't know why we will say we want to live a purposeful life without the Holy Spirit. A hallelujah. Um, Exodus thirty five thirty to thirty five. Exodus thirty thirty. Exodus 35, 30 to 35. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, it says, And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord hath called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Or, of the tribe of Judah. Next verse. And he hath filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. If you look at NIT, it says the spirit of God which give what which gives him this wisdom, understanding and knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. And if you see go through the old verse, you will see that it was talking about the how he was how this Bezale was, you know, he was crafted in he was good in what he was doing. Because the spirit the Lord had given him, it was filled with the Spirit of God. And so if we want to say we want to fulfill this purpose, 
this life that to live this life that God has given us without the Holy Spirit, we can only go so far. We can only go so far because He is the one that gives us this wisdom. He's the one that gives understanding. He's the one that gives knowledge. He's the one that gives everything we need to fulfill purpose here or not. So I don't know how we would go on living life without um, the Holy Spirit. I don't know how we would think we want to fulfill purpose. How we want to have that wisdom to apply to our job, to apply to that. Because why, why, why is it needed to fulfill purpose? You, If you are working and you are going to face different things, in fact, me to the I had almost gotten angry so many times I could not even count the number of times just because I was rushing to get here and people kept making mistakes. But you know, I kept asking, Oh, Holy Spirit, help me. <laughs> because, and it's true, it was helping me because, and, and on top of that, there was the network was just now terrible. And I was just like, Holy Spirit, let me not just lash out at someone today. Um, so you are going to face different things that will make you get tired. And you know, it's the Holy Spirit, it's from knowing yet, because honestly, normally I would have also lashed out a lot today. But um, studying about the Holy Spirit is when I knew that, you know, is the one that is the only one that can give you that calmness, that patience you need to, to you know, to, to, to do that uh, you're supposed to do well. And, um, you know, not just do it in a way that people will wonder if you are a Christian or not. And so that's why I said to fulfill purpose, we all will need the Holy Spirit. Say, Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, next I said is source of power. I said what the Holy Spirit does is, is, a, is a source of power. And if we should look at um, looking at Luke 4.14 Luke 4.14 Luke 4.14 Luke 14 I don't know if anyone is there who can read for us before I get there. Oh, I think I've gotten there. Look for 14. Then Jesus returned to Galilee. Uh, filled with the Holy Spirit's power. Reports about him spread quickly through the whole region. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise, God. Praise Jesus. It says, um, Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit's power. And that's when reports about him spread quickly. Which is why I first titled, said in the first Thing that the Holy Spirit does for us as a refresher is he helps us with the purpose. Because here, when Jesus was filled with the Holy, with the Holy Spirit, we, this was after he had even come down from, um, this was after he was tempted. You see there in that Luke 4 verse 1, it says, Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in, in the wilderness. And so here, from that first place, we see that the Holy Spirit is the source of power. Amen? Amen. You, that is why you hear Bishop says, Always say that a memorial thing she say, and it is it rings true every time. Yeah. Zechariah 4 verse 6 says the same thing. I don't know if you can turn to Zechariah 4 verse 6. Jesus. Hallelujah. So here we see it again that it's saying it's not by it's not by your strength. It's not by your power. It's not you that can do what you want to do here on earth well. It's not you that can, you know, avoid the um avoid the different thoughts that pops up in your head, the, the toxic thoughts because they will come. It's, it's the Holy Spirit that helps you filter through that thought. It's the one that is a source of power that helps us to do those those especially even in our spiritual work with God in winning souls for Christ, in building the church of God. I, I, we cannot do it physically with our own power. Um, Ephesians three twenty. Can we go to Ephesians three twenty also? Ephesians three twenty says, "Now unto Him that is able to do exceeding abundantly." Above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Which power is it that works in you? Is it your power or the Holy Spirit? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We see here even in Acts 1 verse 4 that Jesus told his disciples before he left that they should tarry, they should wait until the Holy Spirit has come upon them and given them power before they go out and, you know, 
make disciples of all nations. So I, 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 I believe we should know that the only source of power to do this spiritual work, to combine everything that comes to us, both physically, spiritually, is the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thirdly, I said it reveals the truth to us. Praise Jesus. It reveals the truth to us. You know, I read somewhere that we don't need more information but truth. And it is so true. You could have so much information and, you know, you, you it will just bombard you. But you are just looking for that truth that in all this information, what is true to me? What is true for me? And so, um, I really, I watch, I sometimes used to like watching these crime dramas and movies. And you see when someone, um, maybe family member is missing or even when they tell them that that person is dead. You hear them say they just want to know the truth. They've known that this person is missing or dead, but they will still tell you that what is the truth about what happened. And somehow when you hear them, when they say, maybe they've investigated and tell them this is the truth about what happened. Though it might be, I mean, it's grievous, it's terrible, but somehow they tell you that they feel freer by that truth that they just got, by that information. That truth has freed them, has given them some source of comfort about what happened to this person. How did this person die? It was not It was not something nice, it was not something good, but that truth of, okay, this is what happened to that person. I don't know why, but it's, source, it's a source of comfort to them. And so I said the Holy Spirit reveals the truth to us. The truth about, you know, life. The truth about anything. Let's go to John's John 8.32. John chapter 8, verse 32. He says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. And to know, hallelujah, praise Amen. Jesus. And to know that truth, it's only by the help of the Holy Spirit. The truth, everyone just wants to know the truth. You are starting a job, a, a, a business. You want to know the truth, not... You, you might gather so much information and you are trying to dabble into everything, but you just need someone to show you that this is the truth of how to get this thing done. You see teenagers going to, you know, um, teenagers want to know the truth about sex. That's why sometimes I, I, I wonder why the, you know, holding these parents will tell their children, that, uh, the daughters that don't let one guy touch you. That's once. And and guys are touching. I'm not touching is happening. I don't want to just know the truth about what this thing is because you are you are just saying what what would that's what is truth. But you know, thank God for recent times that I mean, it's still people still try and double into it. But it's it's better to just always know the truth about something, not just to be guessing about. Okay, is it true or is not true? Let me find out myself. Let, you know, and so that's why I said the um the Holy Spirit is reveals the truth to us. The truth about that business you're about to go into, the truth about that job, the truth about that person that you want to speak to for anything, maybe a contract or that person that you know is going through terrible times, but he doesn't is not sharing and so he's at work, maybe at the supervisor and he's just misbehaving. You don't know the truth, but the Holy Spirit will guide you into speaking. The, to the way you can speak to that person that will get the truth out of that person that will help you and help that person praise jesus hallelujah, hallelujah. so i said this the holy spirit is reveals the truth to us if we go to john 16 verse 13 to 15 john 16 13 to 15 okay it says when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about future. Amen. Amen. He, shall, he will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise, Praise Jesus. So I don't know. I mean, you might have gone through life. I, I, I think me too, most of my life, I've gone through life without really knowing the importance of the Holy Spirit. Really acknowledging that the Holy Spirit is needed for every every and any, almost anything. He's needed to counsel us. He's needed to guide us. He's needed to tell us the truth of 
whatever it is that we are going on, whatever it is that you know might be happening to us presently. And so I, I, I really don't know if you've not received the Holy Spirit or you don't take him as important, but I'm trying to speak this evening that the Holy Spirit is, is in fact, is, is just very important. Is, is an important personality for us to have fellowship with, to have a relationship with. And last, um, the fourth thing I said is he purges us. Praise Jesus. He purges us. Galatians 5, 16 to 19, it's Galatians 5, 16 to 19. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now the works, then it begins to list the works of the flesh um, that you know. But I'm saying here that the, the Spirit of God purges us from the things we crave for in the flesh. Um... I, I remember sometime last year, I, I was beginning to get into a very terrible habit that I would go into, then come out of, go into, come out of. And I don't know, I think maybe Bishop spoke about, maybe I think it was after a, a um, spontaneous prayer and he was talking about the Holy Spirit. And that day, I, I found myself doing it again and I was like, I just went into the room and I had not even developed at this known the importance of the Holy Spirit like that. And I just asked simply that, you know, Holy Spirit help me with this. I, I, I can't do this on my own. And since that time, I, I just know that that habit just, just went off like that. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Jesus. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that here, that the Holy Spirit purges us. He, he, he takes away those things, those cravings, that because there will, there will always be, you know, pleasures of the world there to tempt us. Things of the world that is calling us to, to you know, out to do things that are out of character, that out of character, out of the nature of uh, a child of God. But it's, the, it's with the help of the Holy Spirit that we can overcome this. It is with the Holy Spirit's help that we cannot, we don't, we don't fall into those temptation because they will come. I mean, Jesus was tempted, and so I don't know how, as a believer, you believe that you will not be tempted. You will not be tempted by things by you know any any and everything is it lost of the flesh pride or uh, lost of the eyes or pride of life there's nothing that will not come our way as as believers but it is with the help of the holy spirit that we can purge that is the one that only one that can purge us and you know cleanse us of all those things that you know come those different toxic thoughts that come to our heads once in a while I, like I was like yesterday at work, and some people were just complaining. They were just talking about, ah, what is even this life safe? <laughs> you know, I don't. I, I someone he came to my sister and said, he just called me. Said, so what this thing now? Will it be relevant soon? He said, this life I don't even know. Why? Why are we here? <laughs> And I was like, she, what is the, what is the issue? He said, no, because I'm looking at history now. See this man, he's dead, and his grandchildren might not even know him. And will your grandchildren know him? <laughs> and I just said, she, you are frustrated. Now. <laughs> I said, please take that frustration away from my table. <laughs> and because that spirit that he, that he brought up, and almost everybody started saying, say yes, so that is true. That what we my with my great grandchild even know me say yeah. that, that's uh, say, just live a comfortable and peaceful life. Hey. I, wow. I said please, you will carry down your discussion. <laughs> just take it away from my side, please, please and please. Say no, yes. I said don't involve me this month because everybody now started you know going along and I was like ah you guys are you you need the Holy Spirit <laughs> because I could see that. The frustration was getting to all of them. They now started telling different stories. Hey, Kiniko, you do some. You will not do something. You will be, see yourself in prison. Kiniko, I said, are you going to see yourself in prison? At which kind of thing is this for? And they, they, it went on for almost.
just an ah, I just I, ah, I said I just kept telling them you people need the Holy Spirit. They <laughs> said no, I said that's so. We are telling reality. I said that's your reality. <laughs> but what I am saying is that you need because you are just frustrated by what you have seen. And so you know, I I I I could have just got, joined them alone and said yes, so. For me, I kept telling them, I said, that's, that's me, I don't want a comfortable, peaceful life. They say, they say, just have small money. Just live your life, then you die because you don't know who we take this money. When you go, <laughs> I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because your great-grandchildren will not come and enjoy the money. That, is that? I said, is it not for you to live inheritance for your grandchildren? And God said, they said, ah, no. That they just let them just live comfortable, peaceful, and I was like, ah, God, I, I, I said you, <laughs> I said you people, you, you people, you people need the Holy Spirit. You need so, and you need a man of God that will, you know, help you out with that. But you know, it's just something that is if you are not in tune with the Holy Spirit, you could mindlessly join them as yes. those things. Right. You could mindlessly say, yes, I just want. Let me just live my life. I, I mean, I used to say that, and also like, what is this? struggle just live this comfortable peaceful life go and but that's not what god called us to be amen amen he has said we should shine our light yes. for the world to see and that's not not to just live like any other we should know the spirit in us that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world and you know because they kept saying life will just happen life will just happen i'm saying like life cannot just happen to me Life will not just happen to me because you, from my man of God, you have to make, you have to, you are the one that will determine what will happen to you mm. in your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I, I, I got from them that, yes, things could get, and this, you know, very intelligent guy, you're very, very brilliant, and, you know, <laughs> very brilliant guy, and, and he's always, he speaks well, but I don't know what came up by him that yesterday. I don't know what he saw. But just kept speaking negatively into the and and ne- those negative energies catch up quickly and so I just kept saying please move away from my table please please and please move away from my table and so what I'm just trying to say is is the Holy Spirit that will help you to know that these are not the thoughts you should have as children of God these are not the thoughts you should have as someone that is co is that is a hair of God that is a co hair of Christ these are not the thoughts should, that should pop up in your head that you should just leave what you should just come here to do is leave and die and just go because yes truly you will get tired during this journey of life you will get frustrated you will see things that will frustrate you you will hear stories that will make you wonder truly that what is it to life what is it to this thing but the Holy Spirit is the one that gives us hope Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 15 verse 13. Romans 15 verse 13. It reminds us of the hope we have in Christ. Romans 15 13. It says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise Jesus. So to have this, to abound in hope, to know that this is not all there is to me right now. To be, to, 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 you know, to know, to look into the future, knowing that you can influence lives, you can be relevant. You need the Holy Spirit. Please tell your neighbor you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit, you need the Holy Spirit daily. Be your spirit. Amen. And so I said, how do you now enter this roundabout refreshing? I said, receive the Holy Spirit. That's just the that's just the first thing. Receive Him daily. Ask, and God has just said you should ask, and He will give you the Holy Spirit. He said it in uh, if we look Luke eleven eleven to thirteen. Luke chapter eleven verse eleven to thirteen. All we need to do to receive is by asking and receiving by faith the Holy Spirit. He says, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? A soul? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? And verse 13. He says, if he then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more 
shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. That is telling you that the Holy Spirit is very important. And all you need to do is just to ask him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Galatians 3 verse 14. Galatians 3 verse 14. It says that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So all we need to do to have this Holy Spirit is by asking and receiving through faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so um, I said... To enter this roundabout refreshing, you first need to, you know, receive the Holy Spirit. That's like drinking the right source. Because, you know, you know how I said I'm relating the Holy Spirit to water? In fact, that sometimes you might be thirsty, very parched, and you see a cold bottle of soda or yogurt. I don't know if you are like me. You might drink, take that drink, but you still feel thirsty. You don't feel satisfied until you take water. That Until water quenches that thirst, you just still feel like something is missing you've taken something cold true you've taken a drink but it doesn't it doesn't quite hit well until you take water and so that's why i said while we can search for refreshment in every other place we could you know look for things in places that but those are just temporary they could only satisfy for a while it is the holy spirit that refreshes us daily that when we ask of him daily he refreshes our spirits hallelujah praise, God. praise jesus and so we are not saying don't, you know, I'm not saying you know it's a balance. You don't go, um, I'm not saying don't go and do all that is you need you need to do, but have the Holy Spirit daily to remind you of the things God has said concerning you. To re when your body is growing weary and you are saying, Is this is this even necessary for me to continue? Can't I just have this little money? And like they were saying yesterday, and you know, just rest, or when you are even on this spiritual work, you are working in God's house, and some at the point you are just feeling like, Oh, I, me, I'm tired, bro. I, I can't go on. It's, 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 it's the lack of the Holy Spirit that, that, that is the Holy Spirit that you are not communicating with. You have not probably you've not received or communicate, you are not communicating with. And so that's why I said the next thing is to you know, keep to get this, to stay in this roundabout refreshing is to stay hydrated, like I said. I'm just relating it to what they like. And by staying at Jesus, I mean having friendship with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Like I said in the beginning, that taking, you are taking, you are, your body is made up of water, but you still need water daily. You still need to drink this water. And so while we are spirit being, we still need the Holy Spirit daily for everything, for counsel, for guidance, to direct, to, you know, for anything. You know, Mama will say sometimes that when you are walking, when you are even at work doing something, keep speaking in tongues. Keep communicating with the Holy Spirit. Keep asking him, what, what about this? What should I do? And you know, someone you just know he makes a way. He will always make a way. He will always speak. Bishop will say, you, you just need to listen for him speaking to you. But we know sometimes we just rush and we are not careful to listen to what the Spirit is saying to us. But we need to wait and just inquire of him and let him respond. It 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 can respond in various ways, and so we just need the Holy Spirit to help us daily, to counsel us, to guide us, to live a life that will not get weary, that we will have this roundabout refreshing. That when yes, we will get tired, but when we get tired, the Holy Spirit helps us, rejuvenates us, energizes us, makes us know that this journey is worth it, that what you are doing is worth it, fulfilling this purpose here on earth is worth it. Amen. Amen. And so, why I believe that every believer has accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Not so many of us are engaging the Holy Spirit, which is why you see us go back into those sinful thoughts and nature. You see us do the things that we are not, we are not supposed to do because while we've received Jesus, we are not engaging the Holy Spirit. We are not asking him for help daily. We are not, you know, using, we are not using the wisdom of the Holy Spirit in everything we are doing. And so I'd just like to conclude by saying we can determine to be more patient, but without the Spirit, our ability to remain calm when de dealing with a difficult situation or person will run dry. We can determine to be more loving, but our capacity to love the unlovable will not reflect the kind of love Jesus modeled. 
We can determine to be more disciplined, but our power over temptation will only take us so far. And so, this is why we need the Holy Spirit, the one that refreshes us, because we don't need more willpower. We need more spirit power. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so this evening, let's just bow our heads this evening and just ask for the spirit of truth to guide us, to lead us into it. If you have not received him, ask for him this evening, that Holy Spirit, I want to know more of you. I want to be able to hear you when you are speaking to me. I want to be able to know your, your counsel, your thoughts regarding different areas and different things in my life. I, let's ask this evening for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I need you to show me the path, to show me the things I'm not doing. Oh, Reba Kashatari Araba Satekete Nyedebo Shatari Araba Baba. Holy Spirit, help me. I receive you. Help me. Let my relationship with you be deepened. Ask for a deepening of your relationship with the Holy Spirit. That you will not, you, when you are making decisions in life, you will, you will ask Him, you will inquire of Him, so that He can counsel you on different things, that, that on, on the possible outcomes. He knows the future. He knows what is going to happen. He knows the things that will happen if you if you go this way or that way. So ask for that Holy Spirit to counsel you at all times, to be your guide, to be your help in your walk in life daily. Holy Spirit, we ask for your help in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me to have a deeper relationship with you. Help me to be able to listen for your voice, to be able to listen when you are speaking to me, to hear what you are saying to me at every point in time. In the mighty name of Jesus, so that I can fulfill this purpose here on earth with ease. In the mighty name of Jesus, so that I don't get weary on this journey on life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ma keshe tari arabo satari arababa. Kesha tari arababa ba ma sate kete kete. You need more power from the Holy Spirit. You need more power from the Holy Spirit. Re kasho tari arababa ka sate kete kete kete. Kasha tari arababa ba ba ba. Thank you, Spirit of the Lord. Oh, we worship and exalt you, Father. Re kasha tari arababa ba. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus.